In the last example, we just looked at how to deal with the product rule. The product rule said if we have two things multiplied by each other, so two functions of x, then we can just say this, uv primed plus v u primed. If the first one's called u, the second one's called v. And then we did an example, and I think it might be nice to show you one more. So in this case right here, we've got an equation. We've got f of x just to play around with different notation. So some function of x is equal to x plus 2 times x squared minus 2x. Now what's f primed of x? Now with this kind of thing, you could, if you don't really like using product rule, you could actually multiply this all out because this is a binomial. You could say x times x squared plus... Uh, x times minus 2x plus 2 times x squared plus 2 times minus 2x. You could write it all out, and then the derivative would be easy. It would just be a polynomial, so you could just deal with each of them by themselves. But I want to show you how to deal with them all together, just in case this was something more horrible that you didn't feel like expanding. Um, then you could deal with it. So let's say f primed of x. And well, this first thing right here, we're going to call that u. And the second thing, we're going to call that V. You know, my little uh, brackets right here almost look like hipster mustaches, if you can see that. But Sorry about that, but uh, here we go. We've got U times V. All right, so if we've got this, because uh, of course then you'd only be doing this ironically then. Um, let's do this for real. So we've got U times V. So that means the derivative would be, let's go back to product rule here. Product rule says U V primed plus V U primed. So u v primed plus v u primed. Now I have my shopping list. I know what I need to get. I need to know u, I need to know v, I need to know u primed, I need to know v primed. Now even if these are all more complicated, you can still deal with it just in the same way. Okay, so even if these u's and v's are really gross and really complicated looking, you can still deal with them no problem. It's just a matter of taking your time and getting through it. So in this case, they're all pretty straightforward. So u is going to be just x plus 2. v is going to be x squared minus 2x. Well, then the derivative of this, let's see. Well, the derivative of x to the power of 1 is like the little 1 comes in front. So 1 times x to the power of, well, 1 minus 1 is 0. Anything to the 0 is 1, so I just get the 1 in front. Plus, well, the derivative of a constant just goes poof, disappears. So that's the answer. This is the derivative of this. Now, if we look at this, um, this is x squared minus 2x. I'm curious about what that derivative is. So derivative, derivative of x squared is, well, the squared comes in front, so 2 times x. And then this is to the power of 2, so it becomes to the power of, well, 2 minus 1, which is just a 1. There's like a little stealth 1 here sitting there. And this one here just becomes minus 2. The same reasons over here. So if that's the case, then I am ready to roll. So what I can do then is just say u times v prime. So f prime of x is going to be u times v prime. So x plus 2 times 2x minus 2. And all that has to be plus v u prime. So plus, in this case, well, u prime is just a 1. So it's going to be easy. It's just plus x squared minus 2x. That was v. Well, you might think you're done, but maybe it helps to expand this to see if maybe some things factor out. It's usually a good idea to try that. So the first term times the first term, x times 2x gives me 2x squared. The outside term, so x times negative 2 gives me minus 2x. And then the inside term, so 2 times 2x, that gives me plus 4x. And last times last gives me minus 4. So that, uh, let's see here, so just so we can see this, this whole thing right here became this whole thing right here. So they're sort of they're equal. And well, maybe I just messed that up with my red lines, but oh well. Um, then I just have to say, well, plus x squared minus 2x. And actually, I think I will try to delete... Uh, this right here. I don't really like it there. There we go. So here I am. I am ready to go. So all I have to do now is just try to simplify this. So I've got something with 2x squared here. I've got something else with x squared. So I can combine those two. 2x squared plus 1x squared is 3x squared. Now I've dealt with this one and this one. Now I've got minus 2x 
plus 4x minus 2x. Well, minus 2x minus 2x, that's going to give me minus 4x. And minus 4x plus 4x gives me nothing. It cancels out. So that's nice. All the x's actually turn out, they cancel each other out. And then I just have my lonely little minus 4 sitting there. So this is going to be my derivative. That's going to be my answer. Remember what this represents. This is the slope of the tangent of this graph at any point. And just to show you then, just for fun, let's maybe uh, do that one. So I'll use my little calculator here. And I'm going to say, um, oops. So I want x plus 2, maybe I'll put it in brackets, x plus 2, close the brackets, open the bracket, and I'm going to say x squared minus 2x. So what this is telling me then, if I do a graph of this, this is what the graph looks like. And what this right here represents, this tells me that as long as I know my original graph, this right here tells me what the slope of the tangent will be at any point. Now my calculator isn't very good at telling me this generic thing. My calculator can tell me the slope of this function at a specific point. So I can try it out. I can set maybe x equals 0. If I put an x equals 0 here, 0 squared is still 0, so I would have negative 4. So that means if I calculate, so second, and I go to this little blue calc, calculate number 6, dy dx, and I say at x equals 0, and I press enter, I should get negative 4. And thank goodness I do. Well, that's pretty much negative 4, so that's why. It's because your calculator tries to estimate it. This is the exact value here. Now you could say, what if I put in a 1 here? Well, let's see, at x equals 1, according to my equation, 1 squared is just 1, 1 times 3 is 3, 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So if I put in x equals 1, I'd better get an answer for my derivative of negative 1. Let's see if that works. So second calc, can I go back to dy dx? I'm going to say x equals 1. And I get negative 1. So that's great. So I know that this works. Well, it turns out I could try it out everywhere. And there's a nice little trick here. If you take a look at this graph right here, this graph is a cubic graph. Um, you can tell that, well, if I expanded this all, I would get a cubic here. So this times x squared would give me something to the power of 3. And cubic graphs often do something like this. It's like they have two points where they turn around. See, this one turns around once here and turns around once here. It turns out if you have polynomials like this, there's a nice trick that every time you take the derivative of a polynomial, you get one less sort of turnaround point. In other words, it forces your function, which was something to the power of 3, it forces it to be to the power of 2. And if I did the derivative of this derivative, you're allowed to do that. It's called the second derivative. But if I decided to take the derivative of this, do you notice that my you know, 2 right here would end up going, uh, it would make 6 times x to the power of 1. And notice that would make it linear. So that would sort of straighten it out. So each time you do a derivative of a polynomial, at least with regular polynomials like this, you always end up the derivative has one power less than your original did. And what that does, practically speaking, is um, this one right here is a quadratic. That's some graph that goes up like this. Now, the meaning of that graph may not seem so obvious compared to this thing. So that's why I just want to focus on the original graph and the fact that this here tells me the derivative of this original graph at any point. Because right? graphing 3x squared minus 4 is going to look like some sort of quadratic that's actually you know down here, actually, because it's going to be moved down by 4. The meaning of that isn't going to be all that useful. Well, it is, but we're not there yet. I think it's important to just focus on doing some of the mechanics behind it just to get you some familiarity. So that is a second example of how to use the product rule in calculus.